When you look back across your life, do you notice certain memories, certain incidents, certain feelings that keep coming to mind, that keep resurfacing forever? Hi, I'm Reverend Allie Bierman, and you're joining us today for Let's Get Metaphysical Show, the show that takes you into the unseen forces Hiding your life in each moment. How come those memories keep popping up? Let's continue. I was thinking the other day about all the things that have happened in my life that were very, very special that I can picture to date the moment, the time of things that happened more than 60 years ago. See how many of these incidents, obviously not identical, but something similar happened in your world, in your life. It all started with me on October 23rd, 1959 at 11.40 a.m. Pretty darn specific. How come I can be so specific all these years later? Because I happen to be looking at the clock at that moment in time. And I had just learned that I was one of a handful of kids given the honor of taking violin lessons. I was eight years old. I loved music. And I was going to get to take violin lessons in school. And I was raising my hand at that time to share with my teacher, while my dad plays the violin, we have one at home. The thing is, when I got home, I found my mom's car there, which my mom was never home in the afternoon because she always worked. My dad had a fatal heart attack on October 23rd. 1959 at 11.40 a.m. Maybe it was his spirit leaving that came by me. I don't know how to explain it. That's why I'm here exploring the unseen events, energies that drive our lives. Well, lots of things like that happen. Maybe something similar to that. Maybe it happened for one of your pets, a uh, similar family loss. Uh, when I was all grown up and I had kids of my own, and I knew that my bubby was very sick and there was nothing the doctors could do to help her. They'd done everything that they could. And I was sitting in Virginia in my home, uh, eating dinner with my family, and the phone rang. The phone rings all the time, yes. The phone rang, and I knew without answering it. That phone call was to let me know. That Bobby left that day. How did I know that before even answering the phone? Maybe your spirit also came by me at the time when she left. That might happen in your experience when people who are special to you leave. I had a similar experience with my mom. Everything was different. Oh, let me tell you this experience that I had with my mom. My mom didn't have dementia, but she had fallen and hit her head and had uh, one of those minor strokes. They call them TIAs. And she wasn't herself anymore. She could see things. And I didn't know if they were real or not, just because I couldn't see them, just because other people couldn't see them doesn't mean they weren't very real because one of the things that she was seeing, we lived in an area where the Civil War was fought, where there are a lot of soldiers killed. Clara Barton practiced her nursing in her neighborhood. So maybe that's what she was seeing, actual scenes of soldiers 
being hurt and dying in the Civil War. I don't know. Other people said she had dementia. It was not dementia. She was definitely didn't have Alzheimer's, but she was very, very confused about things. She actually thought I was her mother, which explained why she gets so awfully scared when I wasn't with her holding her hand for the last three months of her life. Now, here's what's incredibly cool that let me know we have a higher self. Higher self might not be the best word. It's a part of us, the eternal part of us that goes on forever from lifetime to lifetime. And how do I know about that? I never knew what my mom was understanding or what she was thinking or how much she understood of our conversations, but two different times, twice, in the last three months of her life, all of a sudden, out came my mom. Her spirit was alive and well. And everybody's spirit is always alive and well, regardless of outward appearances. If you think somebody has Alzheimer's or dementia, their spirit's intact. And my mom and I, twice, we got to have these talks that were perfectly normal. I was talking with the mom I always knew. She said things to me that I needed to hear. And because it happened twice, we had everything pretty clear between us. And after we talk, she'd go back into her current body and her current mental state. That was the best way I could describe it. it was un predictable, and definitely unknowable. Now, something I forgot to tell you about when my dad left. About two days later, I was looking up in the sky. That's something I've always done, and I still do, because I look anything that flies, a bird, a plane. I wish I got to see a rocket ship. I haven't, at least not yet but anything up in the sky, the clouds, and how they're moving and which way they're moving, it fascinates me. So I was looking up in the clear blue sky, and all of a sudden, from nowhere in that clear blue sky, there was this silver, I don't know what it was, if it was a white, it wasn't an angel, but it was some kind of silver figure came out of nowhere in the clear blue sky, flicked across and went back into nowhere. And I knew, I had no question, I knew that was my dad. I knew it was his spirit. Now, I got to my mom just moments after she had left her body. And what I saw and what I felt then was this great, warm love because she had been in a lot of pain and she was free and she was happy and I felt that happy energy and I saw a golden ball rising up and into wherever it went. So maybe you've had an experience similar to that one because I think we each, when we think about it or allow ourselves to accept such things happening for us, we recognize that they are realities. My mom would come back to visit often. Now, my Bubby did too. And Bubby would come and she'd be this kind of iridescent, a blue-violet light. And she'd just appear here and there. And i talk to her. And I didn't hear words, but I think the most important communication does not happen audibly. And she did that for years and years and years and years and years. And I still will occasionally see that special light. And for my mom, when she wanted me to know that she had come to visit, it took me a while to figure this out. I'm an artist. My home is filled with my own art and with art that people have given to me. 
And you're an artist and you want things to look nice. So they're always arranged attractively and symmetrically. And every time my mom would come, she'd tilt something. So I knew every time one of my pictures was out of line, out of alignment, she had been there. And one night, boy, she really wanted to get my attention. There was a loud crash that awakened me in the middle of the night. And I ran out to see what had happened. I had a photograph by a gifted photographer. His name's Keith Couch. And it was a statue. It was the hand. I think it was a bronze statue. And in the hand was a dove, a white dove. And that was the photograph in this particular frame that came crashing. Now, thankfully, the photograph was not damaged. And I cleaned it up. And I thought, well, my mom seriously needs to get my attention right now. So I took a close look at my life to see where I might be missing something. Those are interesting uh, experiences. And people have told me they had similar experiences to those. But I would say the winner was one of the things that I made was a grandfather clock. But I didn't want something standing on my floor. So I did it with a um, hook. But you know that thing you do with yarn, a hook rug, a latch hook rug. So I made a, so I made a grandfather clock out of that. So a clock goes around, the battery runs down, it stops. You change the battery. So the battery hadn't stopped. And my mom came, and again, she must have had a major message for me. Because I looked at the clock, and it's not just like the minute hand had moved a little bit. The minute hand had moved a little bit, and the hour hand had gone way wacko. So the time wasn't even close to what the actual time was. So for me, that was my mom wanting me to notice something, because I believe everything happens for us because we cause it, because we need to notice something we weren't noticing. Now, maybe you've heard me talk about the night I was cornered and attacked and hit a whole lot in my head, caused a pretty bad brain injury. Now, here's the thing about that brain injury. When she was hitting me and I couldn't move because she was three times my size and she just had me pinned in, I literally couldn't move. And she kept hitting and hitting in the same place of my head. My brain was bouncing back and forth. I never stopped to think about any of that. All I could think about is there are six people. It was a residential facility. There are six people here, and I'm responsible for them. And I can't let her kill me. I can't let her. We need to be unconscious because I need to take care of all those people. I found the strength not only to keep standing, but to notice, oh, it took a while to notice. Every time she went, moved her body back like that, swinging her body at an angle to get her hand back, and she'd come slamming forward again. I realized if I'm really quick, and I can be really quick, when that hand goes back and her body's on an angle, I ran out. I got away. So... The aftermath of that led me into the world of energy because nobody in mainstream medicine could figure out what to do. Heck, they couldn't even find what was wrong. They just would tell me they couldn't help me. And the universe led me from one person to the next person to the next person. And I wound up in the field of energy and I healed because of the energy. And in my practice, I do only energy work, which, by the way, is an instant healing because we clear out everything causing the issues that you can't possibly know about in your conscious mind. 
Everything happens perfectly the way we need it to, the way it makes a difference in our lives. And I think it's more than just in our lives, but in the lives of the people who we get to touch, who are touched by us. Go back and re-listen to those different experiences. See how many of those you can find something Obviously not identical, but something similar that happened in your life. And maybe ask, what lesson was there for me? How did I get to change my life? What did I get to become aware of that I wouldn't have before? And maybe I didn't even become aware of it right now because I just hadn't thought, oh, it happened for a reason. I'm really, really glad that you joined us here today. I am Reverend Allie Bierman. This is a Let's Get Metaphysical show. And I want to be sure that you know, know, I have a different necklace on today, trying to show it to you. There's in the light sitting it just right. On one side, there's an ohm. And what is ohm? Everything in life has a vibration, makes a sound, We don't get to hear a lot of it, the trees, the animals. We don't get to hear all those conversations, the stars. Every planet has its own frequency, and OM is the frequency of Earth. And then on the other side, see if I can get this one in the light so you can see, there's a lotus blossom. So what's the big deal about a lotus? A lotus grows up through muddy, icky water and blossoms into this big, beautiful flower. And it can protect you and it can empower you and it can remind you how powerful you are. So I like to wear this sometimes and also because it was a gift from my daughter and inside are some very precious photographs that I'm not going to share with you right now, but I know they're there and I get to hold them close. Remember, when you're ready to talk to your guides, to your angels, to the entities talking to you nonstop, showing you how you can live your life more easily without all the struggles, remember Struggle is optional. Suffering is a choice you're making. You can make a different choice. If you're noticing a little glitter going on back there, it's actually a patch and it's on an acupuncture point and it's helping me to stop my eyes from going. (laughs) Sometimes I can't even read words because they're doing it, but it doesn't happen all the time because I'm using that. So, Whether you need help physically, emotionally, spiritually, or maybe you're not real happy at work and you'd like to find a different income, perhaps to replace yours eventually. Anyway, contact me and we'll talk. And what I was talking about before, oh, I have to share this with you. Because I know that trees communicate with the plants and all of the languaging that's going on, because I've read so many books on the topic, The Secret Life of Trees, The Secret Life of Nature, The Wisdom of Plants and Animals, just the list goes on and on. So if you watch a tree, notice which way the leaves are facing. I'm talking about the shiny side, not the underside. And you can tell where the sun is. Why can't you tell where the sun is? Because that shiny side is always facing the sun. So as the day goes on, it will move around. I feel sit for an hour and watch any plant. You will see the movement it makes in an hour. But it isn't just the movement, it's the communication. 
not just with other trees, but with insects. And here's something really fun I really want to share with you today. There was a fly in the house, and man, it didn't want to be in the house. And it was buzzing loudly and nonstop, not just the buzz here and there, but nonstop. And I know to communicate non-verbally with plants, with bugs, with animals. So I found where the fly was. And in my mind, I communicated to it. I said, you don't really want to be here. And I'll tell you what, you land on the windowsill and I'll catch you. I actually keep a cup I use as a fly catcher. I'll catch you and I'll put you out. Guess what the fly did? It sat on the windowsill. I put the cup on it. I put it out and it was free and it was happy. Pay attention. Bugs and animals, they're there to support you. They have feelings. They have communications. I was talking with someone yesterday about how wise crows are and how you can listen to their languages. And he pointed out to me, and do you know that they each have their own dialect? So the language of the crows in New Hampshire is different from the language in Massachusetts is different from the language in Maine. And that totally makes sense to me because, man, crows are very smart. And boy, do they carry on conversations. And I've had a lot of mental conversations with, a, especially with a cougar, like face to face. Thankfully, I was inside the glass looking at him and a whole lot of other animals. That's how I learned about how wise and the social networks that animals have by observing them. That's the advantage of living in the country. I had everything in the yard. Oh, I could go on and tell you those stories forever. Anyway, go ahead and take advantage of the gift from Audible and choose one of the books on either the plants or the animals. Or I had this really big surprise a couple of weeks ago. Edgar Allan Poe, who most of his writing flat out scares me. I read a lot of it when I was younger, and then I stopped because it just scared me. But did you know he wrote this amazing treatise? It's called Eureka, and it's a completely metaphysical, in-detail writing, which that's what I'm recommending for you today for your Audible selection. Now visit our show page where you can watch or listen to any episode. And it's very easy to leave a review. And I really appreciate your leaving a review, letting people know about us so we can reach more people who are looking for the same thing you're looking for, to understand the world driving our life choices out of our awareness. Remember to enjoy, that's capital I-N, capital J-O-Y, every moment. There's nothing in your life ever has or ever will happen outside of you. Everything happens within where the impulses you pick up get translated so that you can feel or see or taste or touch or smell. And I look forward to being here with you next time.